what happens when we let our boat drift during a fishing trip or when we spend the night offshore? The answer is wind will push our boat sideways until we're rolling uncomfortably in the waves. And in gale force winds where waves are much larger, this motion becomes dangerous because it can flip our boat or severely injure somebody, an experience we don't want to have. I've designed a parachute anchor to solve this problem. A parachute anchor is an underwater parachute that pulls the front of your boat towards approaching waves. This is what stabilizes your boat. A parachute anchor works like this. You attach your anchor rope to a cleat on the bow of your boat and you drop the parachute into the water. As the parachute sinks, wind pushes your boat backwards. And as soon as that parachute canopy fills with water, tension on that anchor rope pulls your bow into the waves. Not only does this stabilize your boat, but your drift rate will be one mile every hour versus 10 miles every hour without a pair anchor deployed. Less travel equals a lot of fuel and time saved. So let's head up to the front of the boat so I can show you how this equipment is set up. I like to uh, set up my gear when I'm in harbor or when the weather is a lot more calmer before heading outside. Because when it's bumpy out there, it makes it a little bit more complicated to set up your gear. You want to make sure you run your anchor rope outside of any railing or safety lines if it's a, safety, if it's a sailboat. Because I'm going to deploy the parachute anchor outside of this rail on the windward side, which is why I'm painting the line on the outside. Because I wouldn't want to wrap it around a stanchion. So we don't need any un unneeded pressure on that. Most parachutes can be deployed straight off a chalk or a cleat right near the bow like this. And that's all you need to do for the bigger trawlers. The boat will set comfortably in the wind. But a lot of boats work real well when you have a bridle setup, meaning a second line that's attached to this anchor rope that kind of uh, quarters you into the waves. So in this case, with, with, with power vessels, the boat behaves really well when the bow is at a one o'clock position into the wind. For sailboats, that position would be more of a 230 position. And this bridle setup was developed by Gerard Fiorentino in 1947, because when he was deploying parachutes, he noticed that the boats were swinging back and forth uncomfortably, and the bridle setup solved that problem. On the anchor rope, since it is calm weather today, I'm going to do what's called a temporary bridle. And all I'm doing is loop knotting the anchor line so that I can attach a dock line, a spare line, to this loop. And what this allows me to do is quarter the boat to the weather so that the power boat is facing at one o'clock position to the wind. So I've got my bridle loop here set up. And what I'm gonna do now, and I try to use really basic knots on everything to keep it simple. I'm not a knot master, so the simpler the things are, the better for me. So what I'm gonna do is do a bowling knot a basic knock that most of us already know. Now I got the bridle portion set up. This is just a dock line, in this case just a spare line that I had. The parachute system is pretty flexible when it comes to gear when you're setting it up. And here you can see I'm making sure the lines again are all passed outside the guardrail. Always take your time when you deploy a parachute anchor, whether it's in heavy weather or if it's a sport fishing adventure. That way you avoid any mistakes. On the eastern shore, uh, there are a lot of kite fishermen down from New York all the way to the uh, Florida area, and they have to have parachutes deployed to be able to slow it down so they can capture the big uh, game fish. And for a lot of those guys, that's big money you're talking about. Those tournaments produce a lot of money. And they'll angle it differently. That's what's so nice about this temporary bridle that I helped set up because I can position my boat one o'clock to the wind. I know a lot of the kite fishermen like to go beam to when it's real calm like this. It's not rough out, so we can adjust it any, any angle we want. So that's the main purpose of these lines. And because we're so relaxed today out here in beautiful Newport Beach in this nice calm weather, I didn't bring any shackles. So I'm gonna improvise again and tie another bowling knot for the parachute anchor. In heavy weather, of course, I'd have my stainless 5 8 inch shackle attached to this and we are, are good to go. Uh, before deploying a parachute anchor, always make sure I have good communication uh, with the helms person. In this case, I'm gonna signal to go in reverse. You can say it verbally or use hand signals because I know in high winds, you're not gonna hear the person at the helm. First thing I throw uh, overboard will be a polyform uh, commercial float. These are excellent floats for using on trip lines. And the trip line is a, a line that allows us to recover the parachute when we're done. So on the trip line, I wanna make sure that the boat's moving away from the trip line before I drop the parachute in, into the water. If I don't have a trip line, I'm going to be pulling the boat to the parachute and then yanking that thing on board. Okay, 
Then I pick up the parachute and simply drop it into the water. I'm making sure my feet aren't wrapped around any anchor rope. Right? The hardware's gonna sink right away, as you can see. And it'll pull the shroud lines out of the canopy. And as soon as there's tension on this line, that will cause a parachute to cup the water and it'll inflate immediately and we'll feel a sudden stop. You can throw all your anchor rope overboard at once. I prefer to pay it out a little bit at a time. Normally in calm weather like this, we technically would only do a boat length. If I was in a gale situation, I'd pay out a third of the rope that I'm carrying on board. And in storm, I would pay out 50% of the rope that I'm carrying on board. And the lengths of line typically are 300 feet for small boats, 600 feet for larger boats like the, the trawler we're on today. I just saw the parachute roll over. That's because the pairing was positioning the parachute in the correct angle. And now it's deployed. And we're in roughly a one o'clock position to the wind. You can tell by the swell that's out here uh, that we are in about one o'clock position to the wind. The wind's coming on to our quarter here. And that's why I had the temporary bridle set up, set the way I did. Say I'm out here fishing or just hanging out and all of a sudden the weather picks up, the waves become larger and I feel my bow falling into the trough very heavily, I now have to pay out more line because now my boat's receiving the shock load. Nylon rope is like a rubber band. It stretches a whole lot to take up all the force, not your boat. So once you feel the force on your boat, that's the, the motion of the boat falling into the trough. Okay, now I'm gonna communicate with the helms person with, by using hand signals because we're gonna retrieve the parachute now. We're gonna to head towards the retrieval float. That's the float at the end of the recovery line.